Thanks. Welcome to our uh, session today, on, um, which is part of our Mature Workers in Organisation series, um, which is um, part of the CEPAR research. And I am just going to, before uh, I introduce Jürgen, who's our speaker today, um, I am going to just tell you a little bit about CEPAR. Um, so I'm going to um, kick off because time is always of an essence uh, with, with these sorts of events. And first, I would like to begin in the traditional manner um, in Australia for those adjoining from overseas. We like to acknowledge the traditional owners of our land. Um, and here in Perth, in Western Australia, you can see, I don't know if you can see my cursor, but we are here in um, the, the land of the Wujak people, so of the, the Noongar nation of the Wujak people. And um, we pay our respects to past leaders, present leaders, and also uh, emerging leaders of, of those um, people. So um, this is the plan, as I've just said. I will first of all talk a little bit about this CEPA, what is it, and, and our series. And then I'll introduce uh, Jürgen, our wonderful speaker today. We'll have the opportunity for a little bit of discussion and questions. I believe actually Daniela will be facilitating that. Uh, Daniela Andre, you'll meet her a bit later. And then we'll just tell you about a couple of upcoming events. So for those of you who, who don't know, um, CEPA stands for Centre of Excellence in Population Ageing Research. And we're a centre um, that's been established actually now over many years, now probably approaching about 13 um, or so years, um, to focus on this big issue of population ageing, which in many, many countries is, is really critical. And CEPA has lots of different elements to it. There are in CEPA, there are some demographers, there are economists, um, and there are many other sorts of people but we are the stream that focus on this question of the mature workforce. Because of course, as the population ages, we really need to understand how it is that we um, keep people in work longer, because economically we really need to do that, but keep people in work longer in a way that that work is healthy for people, meaningful and productive. Um, I'm representing here today the, our team from Perth. We also have um, a team from Sydney and you can see those guys there. I want to just introduce um, a sort of conceptual model that we use in our stream. Um, and really this is a model where we talk about the, if we are going to achieve that goal of, of retaining, attracting mature workers and then keeping them healthy and productive in work, what do we need to do? And we talk about the importance of including people. And here we're drawing on theories like social categorization theory, the importance of recognizing that, you know, we all like to categorize people and if people are different, we might not include them. We draw on, um, the individualised sort of perspective, which is a bit more um, recognising that people change as they mature, physically, mentally, in terms of motivation, etc. But they change in different ways. So what's really important is that we individualise work to accommodate those different changes. And that's the individualised element. And then the third component of our, of our model is integrate. And this really just reflects this idea that in fact, um, in fact, uh, when you've got um, an aging workforce, you've by definition got a more diverse workforce. You've got younger and older people in the workplace, and it's really then important to think about how to integrate them. And then, so you can see our model there, um, and we've got a couple of papers on that, but I guess what we have in the middle are um, some of the outcomes that flow from having those aspects in the workplace. What's important in terms of achieving all these um, eyes in the model? And that's really, in a sense, what Jürgen will focus on today, because he's going to talk about the importance of age differentiated leadership, which I think we can think of as a driver of those three eyes that we have there in the model. So thank you so much um, for the, the, the muting. 
Um, I'd like now, with um, no further ado, uh, uh, um, time wasted, to, to introduce our wonderful speaker today, Professor Jürgen Wegg. And I have to say, I love that photo of you there, Jürgen. That's, that's fantastic. Great marketing team you must have there. Um, Jürgen is a professor of work and organisational psychology, as you can see there from TU Dresden in, in Germany. He's also the chair of the Centre for Demography and Diversity there. Um, he's got a very illustrious career. Uh, he's, the, he's been the president of the German Work Organisation and Business Psychology Group, which is part of the German Psychological Society. He's a fellow of EWOP. He's currently the editor-in-chief of the German Journal of Human Resource Management and much, much more. Um, he's also had more than 6,000 citations to his work and been a very prolific publisher. But most importantly, I think that um, Jürgen has done some really powerful and impactful research on topics like work design and demography and leadership and motivation. And so absolutely delighted to now hand you to Jürgen, who will share his uh, screen and um, and talk you through his presentation today. Yeah, first of all, many thanks for this kind invitation. It is my honor to be able to speak to you across this long distance, and I'm happy that I can share my uh, some of my insights, and I'm also looking forward to your questions. Uh, I also received some questions already that you collected, and Leah sh was sh sending these questions to me via uh, email, so I will now present what I would like to uh, make as a different point, and then I can also come to the questions that you already collected. Uh, first, what do I plan in the next uh, 40 minutes? Uh, a very brief introduction. I think Sharon already uh, mentioned most of the points that I will present here briefly. Then I would uh, have also a brief uh, overview about what we in Europe see as uh, age differentiated work design, and I was involved here uh, in a project that was running many years uh, and uh, do some advertising for these outcomes. I think it's the best knowledge that we have in Germany, how you can really design work with respect to the aging worker in the mind. Uh, the most uh, important part are what you already said. I will focus uh, mostly on age differentiated leadership, try to explain how this uh, concept developed. It is uh, closely linked also to uh, the uh, different uh, forms of age diversity in teams. And then I would focus at the end on some new developments and research questions for the future that we still have and that might be also interesting for you and for joint research that could happen in the future. Well, that is the plan, so I will just start. And uh, I assume that this is not new for the audience. So uh, if you look at the world in the year 2000, you can see uh, red is 15% or greater of workers that are a population of older than 65 years, that there's a big difference across the world. In Europe, uh, we are all red, and this means that we are perhaps also a little bit more motivated than other parts of the world, uh, mm -hmm. as Japan, for example. You can see Japan is also red for some reasons, uh, that uh, we focus on the aging population and do some research on what this implies for our societies, for the work context. And um, uh, this is something that uh, is, of course, trivial. Yeah? Uh, if you look uh, a little bit uh, in 2000, you see that Australia is green here, but uh, if you go now to the uh, year 2025, also Australia is affected by uh, the aging population. I'm sure this is one of the reasons why your center, the CEPAR, is running for many years. So this is a problem that is regionally different, but it is really a problem that you cannot stop anymore for many reasons. Yeah? And uh, what does this mean uh, for work and organizational psychologists and for the society? You know, it's not only about the aging, it's also about the shrinking of uh, the workforce. Uh, there is an increase in life expectancy that is, uh, as you can see in the brackets, twice as high as 130 years ago. So we are really uh, becoming older. Uh, there's a reduction uh, in the birth rate in uh, Germany. This is for many years after the reunification in 1989, it was going down to 1.4. Uh, children uh, per mother, and this is, of course, uh, uh, much lower than we need to have a stable population. So this is a long-lasting process that uh, uh, is really affecting many parts of our society. Yeah, the number of uh, over 50 uh, aged years persons will increase dramatically, uh, and this is perhaps a little bit specific for the German context. Our pension system uh, is built in such a way that those who are working, uh, they uh, collect the money for those who are retired. And uh, this becomes, of course, also a problem if you have a system like this uh, and the number of uh, working population is uh, reduced, then you have problems with the pension system. Huh? Uh, also because uh, the uh, pension benefit period is increased if the life expectancy is going up. 
So there are many reasons for the society and for working organization psychologists also to uh, focus on this development. Uh, and we see in uh, our group uh, at, at least uh, these four challenges, uh, because uh, if the older workers are becoming more and more important, you might ask the question, well, are they interested to, to continue their work uh, until the retirement age? And very often this is not the case because there's a lot of age discrimination going on. Uh, in the society, but also in the work context. So one challenge is that we have to stop the age discrimination. And this is, a, at least in our group, a, a common uh, goal that we try to achieve with our work. The second challenge is to ensure the lifelong working ability to utilize the potential of the older worker. I think the three I uh, approach that you mentioned is uh, identical to this goal. And uh, we agree here totally, Sharon, that this is an important task where work and organizational psychologists can also help. And the goal is to have the working ability and the motivation of older employees uh, be promoted, uh, conserved or even promoted. Huh? <clears throat> the, thing, the third challenge is uh, that we have uh, the uh, um, different life phases that are becoming more and more important. Uh, and therefore, we also have to think about how we can cope with the addition of these new phases, also the phase of going into retirement. But if you change a job, if you go abroad, all these things become more and more important in our organizations. And therefore, we align this also with uh, the aging of the population. Yeah, the last challenge is, and this is something we share, Sharon, and I love your approaches, and I think you're in the World, one of the most prominent researchers focusing on work design and uh, teaching why we write work design is so important. Uh, we have started, uh, let's say, 15 years ago also to think about uh, what does it mean uh, if you have the aging society? Do we need age differentiated work design? And this is something I would like to uh, focus on in the next uh, uh, two minutes. Yeah? So uh, we believe, of course, that this is an important task, not only to design, to design work in such a way that people stay healthy in general, but also to consider what the aging of the workforce will, and how age differences uh, between employees uh, may impact our task in, in designing good work. Yeah, in Germany, and I'm sure you know similar models uh, also in Europe, uh, this is a model that uh, is uh, the state of the art, the DEAN norm that we have describing how uh, we analyze uh, the uh, stress that people can experience at work. And uh, you can see here that the sources of mental stress are from the tasks, from the work equipment, the physical work environment, the social work environment. And these stressors can lead to strain in the individual. Uh, this is our basic model that we use in work analysis uh, typically for many, many years here in Germany and in Europe. And a, a very small point is that uh, the mental strain is not uh, only negative in terms of uh, feeling monotony or reduced resilience or mental fatigue at work in, if the work is bad designed, but it's also positive in terms of activation and learning. Well, uh, I hope that you uh, can uh, follow me. Uh, Sharon, your picture is uh, a little bit freeze and frozen. So I'm yes, not sure what that... I can still hear you, but I seem to everyone's just frozen in space. But carry on. I can still okay, hear you. Okay, I carry on then. Yeah, fine. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Good. Yeah, and this is uh, just uh, the second slide I would like to present briefly. Uh, if you think about what does it mean to design work in a efficient and a humane work, we come up with models like this. There should be meaningfulness at work. There should be a lot of autonomy, decision latitude, task variety. Uh, employees should be able to plan their work, to get feedback. Uh, there should be transparency. And of course, there should also be cooperation because many people work together in teams nowadays. And uh, this can be also done more or less effectively. Yeah, in another way uh, to describe very briefly what does it mean uh, to design tasks at work in a good way, you can see uh, this list of uh, important constructs uh, uh, and statements uh, that we have in all these norms. And uh, uh, there's a lot of work going into this also here in Dresden, where I work, Professor Winfried Hacker, I think he's very famous, at least in Europe and some other parts of the world, because he was developing the action regulation theory. And, and this is a theory that describes what uh, people do at work and how work should be designed. Uh, and you can see uh, these uh, constructs like having a holistic, complete uh, unit of work. This is the link to his theory, also to have variety of skills and abilities that are needed, that you have control, that you get feedback, and so on. So this is uh, the basis for good work design. And uh, I uh, think that your 3E uh, approach is uh, already going into the direction that you discuss and start to discuss what does this mean for the um, aging workforce. 
uh, in the development of these theories, uh, age was not a topic. So we were just focusing on how to design good tasks for everybody, young, old or middle aged people. Nobody really considered uh, for many years whether age should be a topic in this uh, design recommendations for having good work. Yeah? And therefore the question comes up, and this was also the starting point of a large research project in Germany where I was involved, should work design be differentiated for young, middle-aged and older, and perhaps even also retired worker, if we focus also on what happens uh, uh, in retirement phase, um, there are many silver workers, for example. The answer to this is yes, a very clear yes. Uh, in uh, Germany, the German Research Foundation uh, was uh, spending a lot of money uh, in a project where engineers, computer scientists, psychologists work together for more than six years. And here are some of these recommendations, and I give you the reference to this uh, uh, book that was uh, summarizing also the lessons we have learned in this six-year project. Uh, of course, uh, these recommendations are not surprising. Uh, there are different uh, developments across the uh, working lifespan, for example, that there is less physical strength if you become older. So therefore, you should have uh, uh, correct lifting, carrying techniques. You should uh, plan longer breaks, for example, uh, if you consider uh, the aging of the work population. Uh, and for other aspects uh, that uh, change across uh, the work lifespan, you see uh, some recommendations. This is just to make clear and that we have some good reasons, also knowledge from research, that there should be a difference uh, in the work design for uh, the older, the middle-aged, and the uh, young uh, um, employees. Yeah, to the left, you can see uh, the uh, book that was uh, published in 2013 by Christopher Schlick, Eckhart Frieling, and me as editors. And uh, we uh, summarized uh, the outcomes of this 15 million euro uh, project that was funded by the German Research Foundation. There are many interesting chapters in it, uh, in different work systems, for example, in nursing, but also in uh, workers who have to work in uh, areas where they have uh, stores and cold temperatures. Uh, and uh, I was focusing in this project on uh, the question that I would like to address next to my presentation. And this was the question is, what does it mean in, uh, the aging workforce with respect to teamwork. And um, one outcome of this uh, is a German book, sorry, but um, perhaps some of you like to read German or are keen to learn German. Then I would recommend that you look at this book that was published in 2015 with the title Diversity Management. And in the subtitle, you can see that there's also the, uh, the idea that we think that uh, there are different generations at work and uh, that we would like to uh, promote uh, the cooperation, cooperation between the young and the old uh, team members uh, in teamwork. Yeah, uh, this is uh, the basic idea where we started, and uh, uh, this is uh, 15 years ago. And when we went to the literature this time, we asked the simple question, what do we know about age diversity and group work? And uh, if you went to the literature, if you read also other sources, and sometimes you find these recommendations also today, uh, it was a very clear positive uh, view about uh, the work of young and old people in teams. And there are mainly three reasons why the author said, well, age diverse teamwork is something very clever and something good. The first is that these age mixed teams uh, are recommended in order to secure the know-how. Before the old uh, workers are retiring, they can share their knowledge, their expertise with the young workers if they work hand in hand in a team. Huh? This will be a benefit, of course, knowledge sharing. And it's uh, also part of your uh, uh, 3i model. Yeah? Uh, to prevent age discrimination, this is a, a rather simple idea of uh, the contact hypothesis. If you would like to reduce discrimination between groups, you bring these groups together. And in this case, the old and the young people, they are always prejudiced and stereotypes against uh, these groups. And if they work together, the stereotypes uh, and the prejudice should be reduced, and this would also lead to lower discrimination of uh, the outgroups. Yeah? The third reason why a lot of people said, well, age diverse teams, age mixed teams are a good idea in the work context, is that you can also promote uh, an age compatible division of labor. So if the old workers, for example, uh, are a little bit slower in doing some things, uh, you can give them tasks where they have more time, for example. And if the young workers are, are eager to do complicated uh, um, tasks with high uh, requirements for fluid intelligence, you can give these tasks also to the young people. Huh? These are the reasons uh, why a lot of people say, well, it's good to have age diverse teams. And we ask the question, is this a reasonable assumption? 
Um, well, as a researcher, of course, uh, you can think about uh, the theories that uh, are available and you can go into the literature. And if you look, first look at the empirical findings uh, that are still present today uh, and that we found uh, 15 years ago, it was very clear that uh, the most of the studies focusing on the uh, effects, the consequences of having high age diversity in teams found negative effects. Yeah? The group climate was worse in these type of teams. Uh, there was a decrease in co communication if young and old uh, members had to work together in the teams, there was a higher turnover rate. Very often it was found that the older workers are leaving the team context more than the younger workers, and there was also lower performance. In some studies, however, there were also uh, no uh, negative effects uh, or even some positive effects. And uh, uh, the uh, point balance, uh, nevertheless, uh, is uh, rather negative if you look uh, on the question of uh, which type of team is more effective, an age homogeneous team or an age diversity. And uh, the um, meta-analysis that I always like to cite, it's uh, only focusing on natural teams, so, so there are no laboratory stu studies or something like this in there, or real teams like in tax offices where we, we did also our research, you find that there's a negative main effect of minus 0.06. Uh, the confidence interval is not including zero, so this is significant. And overall, Yoshi and Ro found that age diversity is leading uh, to not highly, but uh, uh, significantly uh, um, lower performance uh, in teams. So this were the empirical findings. <clears throat> and then we went to the theories. And uh, I could talk about this one hour, but I'm not allowed to talk so long about it. So I, I uh, sum it up very quickly here. There are several theories on team composition. And we said, well, if you would like to achieve some progress, we have to have developed a more complicated model. It does not make sense to look only in, on main effects and research main effects of age diversity on group effectivity. We said, first of all, uh, we know this from uh, social psychology research, the social identity theory, it's very important whether in teams these uh, differences in age become salient. Uh, so you categorize yourself as a young or an old worker, then salience is high. Or if there is low salience, so nobody is caring for age differences in teams. So you do not perceive and do not self-categorize yourself as a young or middle-aged or old worker. If there's low age salience, we would expect that the positive effects of diversity in terms of cognitive conflicts, that you have a deeper discussion, different perspectives, they pay off in terms of good performance. If there's high age salience, the probability is very high that uh, social categorization processes happen and that their emotional conflicts in teams come up and they are always bad for uh, group effectivity. Huh? Uh, this is the basic idea of uh, including social identity theory in, into this uh, domain. Uh, and then we went on and said, well, there are some other approaches and theories in the literature where you can see uh, that the team climate, for example, is an important uh, variable that affects group effectivity. If there's open communication, if there is respect in teams, this is a positive team climate. And uh, this is, of course, uh, also a, a buffer against stressors that might be linked to uh, high age uh, salience and uh, age diversity in teams. The second variable that you can see on the slide is appreciation of age diversity. We developed uh, 15 years ago, Dan van Krippenberg and Mia New Scale, to measure the attitudes that workers in teams have against age diverse teams. And the basic idea is very simple. Uh, if I appreciate age diversity in working in a team, uh, the negative effects should be reduced because I like to work in uh, age diverse teams and I anticipate perhaps some of the problems. If I don't like, if I have a low appreciation of age diversity, this will also increase the emotional conflicts that can uh, come up between young and old people. Yeah, and we measured also the age prejudice because people who have high prejudice against the older workers, against aging, uh, they of course should also increase in age diverse teams, the emotional conflicts. If the moderator variables are positive, the cognitive conflicts and the positive effect are more pronounced. Yeah? Finally, our model, and this is not a story after 15 years, but it's really the model we started with uh, doing our research, was that we integrate also the knowledge from information processing in teams. Uh, and this is very clear. Uh, uh, the uh, cognitive conflicts, that there are different perspectives on solving a problem, uh, they are, pay off in good performance if you have complex task demands. If you have to find new solutions. But in routine tasks, like in car manufacturing, where everything is standardized, yeah, and no need for discussion is really there, you should just follow the routes. Uh, this does not really pay off to have cognitive conflicts. So we said also task complexity probably is an important moderator variable. 
that affects whether age diversity in teams is good or bad. Yeah, at the end, and this was really something we learned, we also found out uh, in our studies that the individual age is another moderator variable because uh, we uh, analyzed also in representative samples in the German workforce who is uh, benefiting, who is suffering from working in age diverse teams. And we found consistently in several studies that the young uh, workers, if they have to work in an age diverse teams, they are suffering more from uh, being in this age diverse teams than the middle aged or the old worker. Huh? So the individual age uh, of a person in a team is another moderator variable. This one was found on later uh, in our studies uh, that has an effect uh, on um, uh, the consequences uh, of age diversity in teams. Yeah, just to give you a, a clue of uh, what we were doing in this uh, project over six years, you can see here uh, some of our studies. We had uh, a cargo data from uh, more than 111 tax offices, and in each tax office, uh, people are doing the same task, but we had groups that were doing routine tasks or complex tasks. So this was analyzed. We had the local government in Münster city here in Germany, where we had pension offices, uh, and uh, you see the number of groups. We had the head office Münster, another tax office study that we could do there. We had a private service company because tax office is a public officer, so this is a specific type of worker also, and we went to the uh, regular business, uh, the uh, service companies with 250 groups. We uh, analyzed the car production at uh, Daimler with uh, 56 teams over one year. We had a representative survey of the German workforce, uh, more than 2,000 participants, where we could test some of uh, aspects of our model. Uh, we went to a VW, another car production uh, in Germany with 90 teams and did an intervention there. We had a, another project focusing on nursing with uh, also, once again, 90 teams, real teams. And we convinced one of our health uh, uh, agencies here in Germany, our car plus, uh, also you know, to do a study in the many companies uh, that they had access to. Yeah, I don't go to the details of the methods, time is running, uh, but you can see this is the basis. We collected data in as many teams as possible with different methods. And uh, I give you now the conclusions of what we have learned in these studies. And these are seven conclusions, recommendations for age diverse teamwork. You can read them here. Uh, our model was uh, really uh, often supported in uh, all these studies. So uh, uh, as a summary, you will not be surprised that you can see the uh, moderator variables once again in these uh, recommendations. We found indeed that complex tasks without time pressure are very beneficial for having positive effects of high age diversity. And if age diversity is going up in a company, you should think about giving these teams more complex tasks and to reduce the time pressure. Uh, the salience, uh, based on the social identity theory, is very important. We measured this with a scale of six items only. And uh, every time that salience is going up, and this also has to do with uh, uh, the uh, objective age diversity in teams, there's a correlation of 0 0.30, 0 0.40 in our studies. So if there's high real age diversity, people perceive very often also this diversity. Uh, and if this happens, uh, this uh, typically leads to conflicts, uh, negative conflicts. And uh, therefore, we should reduce salience uh, of age diversity. We should promote the appreciation of age diversity, the attitudes. This can be done by trainings, and I'll come to the trainings that we develop very soon. Uh, you should also, we found in studies that the positive team climate is another moderator variable. And uh, of course, we could see that every time there is age discrimination, this is bad for the health and workability of the workers. This was also confirmed. So we should try to reduce this uh, actively in uh, teamwork as well. You should, of course, also improve the ergonomic design for teamwork. We were co cooperating with the automotive industry in Germany, and they have a lot of investments in ergonomic work design, and we could measure the ergonomic design also in these contexts, for example. And we found found out that this also pays off for the teamwork. Yeah? And we should uh, promote age differentiated leadership of the supervisors. And this was really coming from this uh, project focusing on age diversity, the potential positive and negative effects. We discovered here that the supervisors, they are very, very important uh, in order to uh, manage uh, age diversity uh, in organizations and in teams because they can influence the task complexity. They can, by communication, by other things, influence the salience of age differences in team. They can influence the team climate. They also are part sometimes of age discrimination. Uh, and they are also uh, having influence on the economic design of work. So we said, well, we have to focus on the leader if he would like to change uh, and influence this in organizations. So, uh, this is um, what we came up with, and you can read this in the book. There's a book chapter summarizing all this, and I will continue uh, in my presentation very soon with uh, focusing on this age differentiated leadership approach that was developed here. 
Just a, a hint, if you're interested um, in uh, further developments of team composition, I recommend that you read this paper uh, where Bertolt Meyer, he's a professor here in, in Germany in uh, Chemnitz, and I worked together at the Work Aging Retirement. This was recently published. Uh, we described the model, also the Adigo model that I was uh, showing to you before. Uh, and we also uh, asked the question uh, whether fault lines in teams uh, uh, play a role. Uh, and uh, you can see that we uh, have the conviction that uh, a brain cell phenomenon like uh, age diversity in teams requires a brain cell theory, and you will not be surprised to read the theory that I presented to you there and some more uh, developments here. So if you're interested in age diversity in teams, what we can do about it, what is the theory also underlying this, you should really look into this uh, nice commentary that was published recently. Yeah, as I said, we discovered in this project that uh, it might be a good idea to develop a concept like age differentiated leadership. No? And uh, as time is running, uh, I don't have time uh, to uh, go into all the details, but uh, the start of uh, the, the age differentiated leadership research uh, was in the results of the Thin Age studies by Ilmarinen and uh, others. Uh, and they found out that uh, by looking at the workability across the lifespan in longitudinal studies, that in particular the older employees, uh, they were stable in their workability even up to the retirement age of 65 if three things happened. Individual health promotion in the company, ergonomic intervention, and age differentiated leadership. So it was not invented by me, but it was invented the basic idea of having age differentiated leadership by Ilmarinen uh, in this Finn age studies. And we based on this and uh, uh, impressed by our research on age diverse teams, we said we have to extend what Ilmarinen was uh, uh, writing there. Uh, he was coming up with open communication, low prejudice, so everything what we also thought about. But we, uh, um, inspired by our work on age diverse teamwork, said, well, Work is teamwork, and therefore we have some general principles. Uh, we call them general principles uh, and see this as a part of a multi-level approach uh, where also teamwork is uh, included, not only the dyadic leadership situation where there's one leader and one follower, but also a leader that has to uh, lead an age, more or less age diverse teams. And these general principles come from these uh, research projects that I showed you before on age diversity in teams. So we said, well, a leader uh, in, of an age diverse team should facil facilitate a positive togetherness. Yeah? He should involve all age groups in decision making yeah? uh, and promote training education for all age groups also to prevent age discrimination because very often older people are excluded from uh, training uh, offers uh, at work. Yeah? Uh, and altogether we have seven items. I show you this question now also on the next slide, uh, and uh, this was focusing more on the teamwork aspect. Uh, extending the work of Ilmarine, and we also say, well, uh, going to the literature, uh, this uh, general principles imply that the leader should not make a difference between young, middle-aged, or old people. So he should treat all the uh, age groups in the same way. However, there are some reasons, good reasons, why leaders should also acknowledge that uh, motivation processes, uh, requirements to develop yourself, interests are changing over the work lifespan, and therefore there are some things that the leader should do more uh, if he tries to lead old employees, and some things that the leader should do more or less when he is trying to lead young employees. These are the second and third skates in our questionnaire. And you can see here some examples for the older employees. We say you should encourage to share work experience because uh, if you are 50 years, the generativity motive is activated and older people are more willing to share their knowledge. So if you offer them uh, to do this, you acknowledge their uh, experience, expertise and you also um, motivate them to uh, do perhaps more interesting uh, tasks that they would like to do. You should, of course, this is a uh, comparator to the uh, individualized uh, approach that you have, individual needs in staff planning. Uh, you, should, you should involve uh, the uh, older workers a little bit more in upcoming change for several reasons. Huh? For the younger, we were focusing on feedback and just to prevent misunderstandings. Of course, everybody benefits from constructive feedback, huh? young, middle-aged and old employees. But uh, the young people, they ask for more feedback than the old people and they need more feedback uh, in view of their development tasks that they have. Huh? So we argue that for young uh, employees, the leader should give a little bit more feedback, offer more feedback in order uh, to improve their performance. Uh, very often younger employees are discriminated because uh, leaders think they are not uh, mature enough to do complex, difficult tasks. So you should also delegate varying work tasks to young people. And these are example of this approach. Yeah? Uh, the questionnaire, and you can get it, as I said, uh, had 16 questions. And you can see here the first seven, uh, they are focusing on these general principles for age diverse teamwork, where the leader should not make a difference between young and old people. Then the other items for the 
uh, young uh, for the old and for the young workers. This is how we started. Uh, this uh, 16 questions. We went then to what you typically do as a researcher to different locations and measured this uh, questionnaire. This is called in German FRF. So uh, Fragebogen zur Altersgerechten Führung. Uh, so this is the, the age-related leadership questionnaire, the general, the old, the young, and the sum of this. And we went to a nursing sample where you can see here, this was quite an a sample that was quite old because they were in the middle was uh, 51. So the other nurses were the older nurses that we're focusing on, uh, uh, more than 45 years old. Yeah? Uh, and um, so it's a specific sample in nurse. We were interested in the old nurses here. And you can see here that the reliability of the scales were good. Uh, we found uh, three for the three the dependent variables, well-being, turnover, intention, personal accomplishment as part of the burnout uh, questionnaire, uh, the correlation that we expected in the right direction. And if you take, for example, the, the sum of our questionnaire, the 16 items, you see well-being is positively correlated in these old nurses, turnover intention is going down, personal accomplishment is positively, also the self-efficacy is high if you lead uh, nurses in such a way. Huh? Uh, okay, in another study, production, uh, we found uh, very similar uh, results. You can see here, uh, once again, the reliabilities of the scales are quite good. Here we had self-efficacy, job satisfaction, and turnover as dependent variables. And you can see here, once again, if you take the sum uh, or the single uh, elements, uh, there are some differences, but they are very often the uh, three uh, scales are also correlated 0 0.70, 0 0.80. So it's uh, it's really a possibility to use the subscales, but you can also very compatible work with uh, uh, the summary scale. Huh? So this was uh, uh, really um, um, yeah, encouraging us to continue work. And now there, I think there are 15 more studies uh, in a lot of companies where we always could replicate these positive effects yeah? uh, with uh, many other variables that are interesting. Yeah, because I would like to use my time clever, I would try to focus now uh, your um, attention to the new developments that we have uh, in the recent years and some research questions for the future that we think are important if you're interested in age differentiated leadership, if you're interested in age differentiated uh, work design and age diversity in teams. Yeah? So <clears throat> first of all, and this was something we learned by going uh, to uh, practice with our skates, our questionnaires in sessions like this, uh, the employee said, well, Professor Becker, it is nice that you think about the young workers and the old workers, but what about the middle-aged workers? Is there no concern about these people being uh, in the age of, let's say, 40 to 50, 35 to 50? And we said, yeah, you're right. We have to add something to our questionnaire because there are some specific stresses, uh, life uh, situations that are perhaps most relevant for these middle-aged workers. Yeah? So we uh, developed our questionnaire further. <clears throat> and edit uh, uh, items uh, to also uh, assess uh, the challenges, uh, the uh, type of leadership that should be shown with respect to the middle-aged worker. We went on and said, okay, uh, well, in organizations, there are very often striking differences in, in how uh, age diversity uh, is uh, and age discrimination is uh, um, developed. And therefore, we uh, did a study uh, to measure the organizational age climate to see how this also is linked to the organizational level. We developed a training, and maybe most of you are interested in this. Uh, I give you the opportunity, a link later on also, that you can try our training that we have developed uh, for age diversity, different leadership. Uh, and um, we also have now studies and um, some of us, but one that uh, uh, other colleagues from uh, Germany have published very recently, where we looked at the incremental validity of the age differentiated leadership construct that I described. Yeah? So just uh, to give you an idea of how this looked like, uh, you see here the new uh, FIF uh, that also includes uh, the middle age group. And as you can see here, uh, these are the items, uh, number 13 to uh, uh, let's say uh, 15, uh, that uh, is uh, 16, sorry, that we added. Yeah? So four items for this middle age group. We discovered by going to the literature, by discussing with uh, experts from the field, that uh, middle age uh, subordinates should have uh, very uh, flexible work strategies. Huh? So working time and remote work nowadays, this is, uh, of course, due to the pandemic, something that is completely different now <laughs> compared to two years ago. Uh, but if you have childcare uh, or care for your dependents, if your parents uh, need to uh, help uh, or your child grow up, uh, you need much more flexibility. So we added this item in our questionnaire, whether uh, employees perceive that uh, there's high flexible work strategies for this middle age group. Uh, also, the uh, special company leave due to family obligations, uh, maternity leave, uh, other types of uh, uh, 
uh, breaks you need if uh, things uh, become more complicated, if you have a family uh, were added, uh, and uh, the other two items, uh, number 15 and 16. Yeah, uh, we now have this questionnaire, and uh, as practice always said, well, oh, Professor Wegger, 69, and such a long questionnaire, uh, is it possible to have a short one? We also did an uh, analysis with all the data that we have and came up with this uh, blue marked items here. So the, 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 the shortest version of our uh, questionnaire to measure age differentiated leadership, including these four groups, the general principles for teams, young, middle aged and old has these uh, eight items. Huh? And we did a study, for example, with Siemens in a large uh, sample of more than 1000 uh, uh, um, workers, uh, blue and white color workers, and we found that this case is perfect and we can see, find strong correlations with the health uh, and other variables uh, that we predict. So it is working, also the shortest version of this. Of course, uh, if you're interested in going in more detail, it's much better to have the longer version Then you can also analyze and discuss the items uh, with uh, the teams that you're measuring. Yeah, for the uh, um, psychological edge climate or the organizational edge uh, climate, we were using a questionnaire that was published by Noak, Paulus, and Staudinger. You can see here in prep, it is still in prep, sorry, because they never managed to publish it. So uh, they uh, try to measure uh, in the edge climate in organizations uh, and they use these items. And uh, uh, this is just an agreement. Uh, I, I do not agree, stimmt nicht, or I, I totally agree, stimmt genau. So they measured uh, the agreeness. Uh, whether in my company, older employees are seen as cooperative, reliable, and so on. They found that this is a one-dimensional uh, scale, and we use this scale, and uh, it's published, if you like, you can see on the next slide also the reference. Uh, Mrs. Belinska, a PhD student of mine, uh, me and a colleague from the development psychology, uh, we uh, collected data in a nursing context, and we had this uh, theoretical model. We said, well, organizational edge climate is, of course, on the level of the organization. Below is the level of the individual, and uh, we anticipated and tested whether the organizational edge climate uh, is uh, mediated via higher organization identification to turn over and and job satisfaction and could also influence uh, the uh, influence from age to age stereotypes. Huh? So just to make you curious, I, I know this is a lot of information, but uh, what we found here, and you can read it up in the Journal of Personnel Psychology 2016, we went to more than uh, 40 geriatric care units. So we had this uh, power also on the level two to compare the units. Uh, and we had uh, almost 400 nurses working there. We collected data uh, in a cross-sectional study. Uh, uh, and uh, we found that uh, the positive organization age climate is associated with fewer individual age stereotypes. So this is very good to have this climate. Uh, it is uh, linked to lower levels of turnover intention uh, and it's linked to higher levels of job satisfaction as we anticipated. Huh? And even after controlling for other climates, so it's really the age climate that is uh, relevant here. And both associations as anticipated um, were mediated by organizational identification. Huh? So this also worked uh, and organizational identification is a uh, uh, driving force uh, when you have a good uh, age climate in companies. Yeah, the training uh, that we developed uh, had these goals, and this is uh, uh, a development that uh, is uh, still continuing. Uh, we said we, we need a lead training for the leaders, as I mentioned before. We should raise awareness uh, for age and aging. We should increase uh, the attitudes, the appreciation of age diversity. Uh, we should increase also the age diverse leadership that we measure with uh, our questionnaire now and reduce age stereotypes. And this will all lead to a reduction of uh, uh, risks of age diversity and uh, a benefit, uh, promote the benefit of having age diversity also in teams. Huh? This was the basic idea. And uh, we developed the first training, a uh, two days modular. Uh, you can see uh, the trainer, Mrs. Jungmann, uh, who was doing these uh, trainings also in companies. Uh, and uh, we had different methods uh, like uh, awareness training, skill-based training, group discussions, uh, and so on. All this is published. Uh, and you can see here that we also had a booster session in our studies where we looked later on uh, uh, after uh, some months, uh, whether there needs uh, some more discussion and help for the trained leaders uh, to take uh, the benefits from this training. Uh, and um, this uh, is a very simple, clear structure. We have these two modules here uh, that you can see. Uh, we uh, try to teach that uh, um, edge diversity can be a resource uh, and uh, uh, define, first of all, what is edge diversity and what are the effects of this. And the second module was more focusing on the communication, the behavior, and on age differentiated leadership. Yeah. Um, if you'd like to read the outcomes, uh, this is published also uh, recently, 2020, in uh, Work, Aging and Retirement. And we found that this training is working. And we also found that this training uh, benefited the young employees a little bit more than the old employees. 
Okay, so um, this is a training that was done face to face and in German. And then we got uh, the health insurance, our car plus, a big health insurance company in Germany. They allowed us to develop an online training, also focusing more on small and medium sized companies, because very often in these companies, uh, the people, the leaders, they don't have time to go two days for training. Huh? So we said an online training might be good. This is a German version, sorry for this, uh, but I can tell you that we also, with a, in this project, we're able to translate this into English. Yeah? So just to see, there's a, an online training where you have a learning path. There are four modules that you can go on and some additions. Uh, and uh, for example, in this first one, this is about prejudice. You can see uh, some German, you know, this is uh, compulsory. You have to learn about the prejudice against the German here. Uh, and uh, this is uh, offered on the homepage of this health insurance here uh, in Germany. Uh, and um, we, uh, as, as I said, we also have now an English version. And uh, you can see here that in this training, you have Mario. This is the, the online tutor that helps you to go to this training that uh, gives you advice. Uh, and here you can see uh, for you translated in the English version, some very common prejudice about Germans. They are precise, they are in time. Oh, Sharon, I'm not in time. I'm not German. Uh, I'm uh, resourceful, uh, beer lovers, uh, and dressed in leather trousers. Yeah? So uh, this is something that we take in this training to uh, make, it, uh, <laughs> make um, uh, clear that there are prejudice. Uh, and you see, it's, it was not developed to be in English, but we. Uh, take some money and we say, okay, we have uh, in the same system, we have also the English version below the German. So you can do this. And if you try to get an uh, impression of this, uh, you can see here we have a test user that you can uh, uh, try. Uh, there is uh, the password that you need. Uh, this is uh, the password, yeah. Uh, if you go to this URL, you can take this test user, then you can click it and see what happens there. Yeah? There are also some videos and audios and so on. Important, if you like to do it, you have to press this button here, English. Otherwise, it will be on in German. And if your German is perfect, why not? If you like to learn German, also OK. But if you do not speak German, take the English version. Yeah, this is uh, almost my, the end of my presentation. Uh, the last point as a new development I would like to highlight is that uh, uh, there's a very cool study by Kozel, Friedrich, Rudolf, and Hannes Sacher. Uh, and uh, this was published uh, last year. Uh, and they uh, tried uh, with our instrument, the first one we had, the FRF16 with, uh, without the middle age group, they tried to analyze whether age differentiated leadership predicts workability incremental to leader member exchange, a prominent approach in leadership research. Uh, they also looked at, uh, uh, the balanced approach to age differentiated leadership. This is the general principles part. They call it balanced approach because there's no difference in leading young and old. Yeah? Uh, and they looked at the um, idea that young workers would benefit uh, from uh, the, the uh, young parts that uh, promotes uh, young employees and leadership and the older from the old part. What they found, and I'm really happy to see this, uh, it's the best that can happen that other colleagues work with your instruments <laughs> and test them, uh, is in a large sample of more than 1,000 uh, in a longitudinal study that indeed the H by uh, ADL odor, so that uh, this is um, uh, the, uh, the focus of the how the leader should lead the old employees, that is really significant only for the old employees. So they benefit uh, in organizations in terms of workability if the leader shows this behavior. Huh? Uh, they found with the balanced part, the general principles, that the young and the middle aged they benefit uh, when a leader is doing this. The oldest do not benefit from this. Yeah? So there are indeed interactions between the age of an uh, individual and the way how uh, age differentiated leadership works. Uh, in the comparison to LMX, they found also that the young uh, and the middle aged they benefit also from LMX. And the age differentiated leadership scale was uh, um, having incremental variance, uh, 6% across the LMX. So they were, they're both in the same strength. Yeah? So it's a, a new construct. It's not the same to have a respectful communication with your leader that is measured in LMX and a trustful communication. Uh, age differentiated leadership really pays off and adds uh, in the explanation of important uh, variants. Yeah, thank you very much for your attention. And uh, I hope that my German English was understandable for you and uh, uh, that we have some time for questions. Thank you. Thank you so much. I, that was such a terrific talk.